Hi yogis. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to your practice for today. Our practice will be focusing on the hips today and a message of creating spaciousness in the body as well. So that message is going to come from a little reading I'm going to do. Um, but before we get started, before I do this reading, just a little let you know what we'll be doing today. So no props needed for this practice, but of course they're always optional. And instead of ending the practice in Shavasana, we're going to end it in a short seated meditation. All right. All right. So I'm going to do the reading and this is from my yoga 365 book. This isn't actually today's date reading, but I came across this uh, reading. I thought this is perfect. So finding spaciousness in your body. Yoga offers us the experience of spaciousness in our bodies. Spaciousness can be defined as the opposite of tightness. Tightness can take up residence in any part of our body. And when it does, we feel limited, constricted, and uncomfortable. It can be the result of tension and stress or of muscle overuse or lack of use. Our bodies feel spacious when we loosen up the tight areas to create a greater range of motion and flexibility. We feel like we can move in ways we previously couldn't. Today, when you move on your mat, notice if you are able to create the experience of spaciousness in your body and see how it opens up your day. So I know for so many of us, me included, that the hips can be an often very tight area. Um, we hold a lot of our emotions in our hips. So that is cause for reason for the hips being tight, as well as if you do a lot of sitting, um, driving, and or if you overuse, overuse the area of your hips by doing a, little, a lot of strenuous exercise. Um, so the hips are always an area that we always practice on in yoga. And um, sometimes I like just doing a specific practice just for the hips, which is what we'll be doing today. Um, and bringing in the intention then of creating spaciousness within the hip girdle and the pelvic floor. So that whole region here. All right. So let's get started. We're going to get started on our belly in um, half frog. So just making your way down to your belly nice and easy. And you can stack the hands on top of one another. Just rest your forehead here. And let's just take a few breaths here first. So you can widen the feet a little bit more if that feels good in your lower back. Letting the glutes be nice and soft in the lower back. Let's just take three cleansing breaths here. So inhaling through the nose, to the belly, to the low back. Open mouth, exhale. Taking two more breaths just like that and already noticing the spaciousness that you're creating in the body with your inhale. And with the exhale. And then we'll begin our half frog. So bring the legs back in towards one another if you had them wide. And then we're going to bring that left leg out to the side of us. And I'm just going to put my head up here. We want to make sure that the knee is aligned with the hip. So we don't want it too far down or too high up. Doing your best to align that knee with the hip. And then opening up that foot so the ankle is aligned with the knee. And then you can just come to rest the forehead on the arms again or the hands or you can also extend the arms all the way out and bring your cheek to the floor i'm just going to prop my head up just for the sake of the microphone good and then what we want to focus on here is letting those hips sink towards the floor and notice if the glutes are wanting to clench or grip in any sort of way or the hip girdle We want to allow their muscles in this area to soften so that the 
bones and the joints can all kind of open up, create that space. And we're not looking to push the hips to the floor. We just want it to organically happen. And if I didn't mention before, just have a gentle flex in that left foot. Letting go of any tension in the jaw, shoulders. We'll take about another five breaths here. Breathing in and out through the nose. See if you can slow your breath down. Taking a cleansing breath. And we'll slowly and gently bring that left leg back to center. And then it might kind of feel good just kind of gently rock the hip side to side and release the lower back. our way to the right leg so maybe cross the or excuse me switch the crossing of the way that your hands were stacked and then we'll bring that right leg out to the side again making sure that the knee is aligned with the hip the ankle with the knee and gently flexing that right foot notice if the pelvic floor or the tailbone automatically kind of want to go into activation by either sending the tailbone up towards the sky or tucking the tailbone. And we just want to be in a neutral place here with the tailbone and the pelvic floor. And taking a big breath to the belly, to the low back. Open mouth, exhale. Really let the belly soften, letting the upper body just sink down. And bringing an affirmation here, I allow my body and mind to release all tension. Remembering that as we release the tension, releasing that tension that has been residing in the body, then it, then it frees up space in our body. Let's take three more breaths here.
Yeah, I'm taking a cleansing inhale and exhale. And carefully bringing that right leg back to center. Maybe making that same little rocking motion in the hips. Good. And then let's just hold here for a breath. And then from here, we're going to very slowly make our way onto our backs and kind of just maybe come over to one side of your mat if you're on your mat and then just roll on over onto your back. And let's just release the lower back by bringing the knees into the chest and gently rocking side to side a few times. This is always a great go-to pose if you have any tension or tightness in the lower back. I'm just You can kind of play around with how you rock and how you roll here and just feeling this massage on the lower back, the spine, the lumbar, the sacrum. All right, from here, we're gonna make our way into reclined swan or also known as reclined pigeon. Let's lower the left foot down, extend that right leg all the way up towards the sky. Let's just point and flex through the foot. And maybe rotate through the ankle. Just give a little love to the ankle and the feet. Good, then we'll cross that right ankle over that left thigh, energetically pushing that right knee away from you. And now you can stay here if you're already feeling a pretty good intense stretch in that right hip, or you can bring that left knee up in towards you and then threading the arms through. So threading that right arm through and then either bringing the hands on top of the shin or the knee or behind the thigh, giving a gentle flex in that right foot. Take an inhale to your belly. Exhaling through the nose, let the belly soften, the lower back release, the hips, the glutes. Good. And taking an inhale to the lungs, to the chest. And as you exhale, letting the chest soften, letting the upper back sink down in the shoulders. So in this yin pose, we really want to focus on making sure that the shoulders aren't activating here. So you're not having the shoulders lift off the floor as you're trying to hold the legs and then the chins up towards the sky. If this is where you're at in your pose, then it might feel better to bring that left foot back down so that the chin can come in, your neck is aligned with the spine, and then the shoulders are plugged back. You'll still be getting a stretch or maybe you just glide the hands down the thigh a little bit more to allow those shoulders to sink back. Really important that we don't put any added um, stress on the shoulders and the neck in this pose. And another option is you can always place something underneath your head. Let that left foot and leg be totally relaxed.
taking a few more breaths here. Scanning your body. Noticing where there may be some tension held or some resistance. Something that's residing in your body that doesn't serve the wellness of your body or your mind. And using this opportunity to release it. Taking a cleansing breath and inhale through the nose. Fill the body up with your breath. Big open mouth exhale. Good. Then slowly releasing the hands, lowering that left foot down. And then we'll lower the right foot down. And we'll make our way to the other side. So now extending that left leg all the way up, foot towards the ceiling, point and flex through the foot, rotate through the ankle. And then we'll cross that left ankle over the right thigh, energetically pushing that left knee away from you. And then coming into your reclined swan. Right away, taking a breath to the belly, to the low back. Exhaling through the nose. Using your breath here as a tool to create space in the body. So feeling, filling the body up and feeling that spaciousness with the breath. And then also feeling that spaciousness on the exhale. Making sure that you're not holding any tension in the shoulders or in the neck. Or as well in that right foot and leg. I often have to remind myself to let this leg that is not in action to let it be at rest.
I'll take another five breaths here. Taking a very cleansing inhale and exhale. Releasing the hands, bringing that right foot to the mat or to the floor and then the left. Very good. From here, we're going to make our way into child's pose and then make our way up into seated pose. So you can just press your feet into the floor, lift the hips up a bit, shift them over to one side and then lower them back down and slowly roll yourself over to fetal pose. Let's just take a breath here. And then slowly pressing yourself up. Mm. Good. And from here, we will come into deer pose. So let's start with the right leg in front. And you can just kind of shift over onto that right hip and then bring that left leg back behind you. So in this pose, we want to make sure that the shin is, if you're on your mat, that your shin is aligned with the edge of your mat or also making sure that the knee is aligned with the knee, excuse me, the ankle is aligned with the knee. And then this back leg, the left leg, we want to make sure that the knee is aligned with the hip. Now, depending on the flexibility in this left hip, you can also bring that left ankle so it's aligned with the knee. If that's a little bit too much, you're feeling this pinch going on in that left hip, that left glute, and just bring that left foot in towards the left glute just keeping the knee aligned with the hip. What we want to focus on here is letting those hips sink down. So notice if you're kind of way over here to the right, seeing if you can kind of bring that upper body a little bit towards the center and then letting those hips just sink down. So we're getting an external rotation in the right hip and an internal rotation on the left hip. And we'll take about five breaths here. We want to focus on releasing the glutes. So notice if the glutes are wanting to squeeze or hold or grip. Creating spaciousness in the hips. One more breath here. Beautiful. Now we're going to stay in our deer pose with our legs and come into a twist. So take an inhale, lengthen up nice and tall. And then exhale, we're going to twist to the right. Maybe you bring that left hand to the right knee, or maybe you just keep the hand here. And then we want to open up that right shoulder. And as you come into this twist, you're going to notice that that left hip wants to internally rotate a little bit more. So this allows us to get into the adductor, the psoas, the hip flexor, as well as that quad. 
but just notice again if the glutes are wanting to clench or grip we want to release that in the glutes and just allow the rotation to happen And we'll take five breaths here. breath let's take a breath to come out of the twist so inhale all the way down to your belly and then as you exhale exhale out the mouth and then untwist coming forward very good now we're going to shift all our weight over to that right hip and very gently we're going to swing that left leg around and we're going to come into baby cradle so you can either use that right hand to just grab onto the left foot and bring the left hand to the knee or a little deeper variation is you're going to nook that right elbow crease into the sole of the foot and then wrap that left arm around so you're holding your leg here like a little baby and then just gently rock side to side give a little gentle flex in that left foot to support the ankle and the knee Good. And then let's just come to be still here, doing your best to lengthen up nice and tall. So rooting down through the sit bones, the hips, but lengthening up through the spine and the crown of your head. If you can let those shoulders glide down the back, creating some extra space between the ears and the neck and the shoulders. making sure that you're breathing here. This can be a very deep and intense hip opener pose. Just making sure that you're breathing through it. Let's take three more breaths here. And last breath. Open mouth, exhale. Very good. And from here, we'll slowly lower this leg down on top of the right, coming into double pigeon or fire log. So you can hold on to that foot if you haven't already and the knee, and then just letting that leg fall on top of the right. We want to make sure that the shins are parallel with one another, giving a gentle flex in the feet. If this knee is up here, that is okay. If it, if it doesn't feel supported, you can always place a block or a pillow or something underneath here just to allow that leg to be a little bit at rest. And now taking an inhale, lengthen up nice and tall, rooting down through the sit bones. As you exhale, let the shoulders soften. Letting those shoulder blades glide down towards the ribs. And we'll just take two breaths here. And now you can stay here and continue to let the hips open up or maybe bring the hands out in front of you and getting a little deeper into the hips here. So we wanna make sure that we're not hugging those hips in towards one another. We wanna create that space by letting the hip girdle open up side to side. 
So notice if the lower back is holding the glutes, the thighs. And breathing into the belly, to the low back. Exhaling through the nose, softening. can continue to walk the hands out a little further. If you feel the hips opening up and you want to go a little deeper, I always like to encourage to take your time. When we slow things down, it gives us an opportunity to kind of feel into the body a little more than just right away coming into the deepest version of the pose. And we'll take three more breaths here. Last breath, my friends. Cleansing exhale. Good, then walking the hands back in towards you. Bring the hands back behind you. We'll come into a counter pose, um, windshield wiper. So slowly unstacking the legs, widening the feet about the width of your hips, and then just gently dropping the legs side to side. Oh yeah. Very good. And let's make our way to the other side. So bringing that left leg in front, right leg back behind, coming into our deer pose. I always like to lift my hips up and kind of let the sit bones settle down. Good. Again, making sure your shin is parallel, ankles aligned with the knee, knee on the back legs aligned with the hip, and finding whatever position for your right foot. And then we'll just come to hold here in our deer pose for a few breaths. Letting those glutes release, letting the hips sink down. Letting there be some spaciousness between the ears and the shoulders. Take three more breaths here. Last breath. Very good. And we'll come into our twist. Take that inhale to lengthen. And then exhale, twisting to the left. It doesn't need to be a super deep twist. Just coming into your twist to you feel that nice deep stretch opening through that right quad and hip flexor. Let the glutes release, especially that right one. 
And we'll take five breaths here. Make sure you're gently drawing that left shoulder back. Now taking our cleansing breath to come out of a twist. Inhale to the belly. Open mouth, exhale as you come out of your twist. Very good. We'll shift over to that left hip. Very carefully bringing that right leg around. Coming into our baby cradle here. Coming into your variation. Maybe it looks like this. Or maybe you bring that foot into the nook of the elbow and then wrapping that right arm around. And then just taking a few gentle rocks here, giving some love to this leg, to your foot, this little baby of yours. Mm. Come back to being still, grounding down through the sit bones, through the hips, lengthening up nice and tall, shoulders relaxed. I'm taking a few breaths here. Last breath. And now coming into double pigeon fire log, using the hands to support lowering that leg down, stacking shin on shin, Good. maybe moving the flesh out from the cheeks, really rooting down through those sit bones. Lengthening up nice and tall, taking a few breaths here first before we bring the hands out in front. Giving lots of attention to what's happening in the hips. We want to create lots of space from hip to hip, so letting the hip girdle open up left to right. Letting go of any tension in the jaw. And then just as we did on the other side, maybe it feels good for you just to stay here. Maybe you bring the hands out in front of you to the floor. Taking a few breaths here. And maybe you walk the hands out a little more. Take three more breaths here.
And taking a cleansing inhale and exhale. Walking those hands back in towards you if they were out. And then we'll all come into our counter pose, windshield wiper. Hands come back behind you, carefully unstacking the legs, widening the feet, and dropping the legs side to side. Nicely done, yogis. Let's make our way into Sukhasana, easy seated pose. So maybe you cross at the ankles or whatever feels comfortable for you in your easy seated pose. And let's bring the hands to the heart, Anjali Mudra. I'm taking a cleansing breath here. And now bringing all of your tension down into your hips. Noticing any energy that may be flowing through this area. Noticing if in this seated pose, you feel that the hips are, have more space between the joints, that you're able to sit in this pose a little easier. It's always good to bring ourselves in to our bodies to feel the effects of our practice. And it's also very good if you're feeling energy flowing through this area to allow this energy to flow to all areas of the body. So letting it integrate. And maybe there's still a little residual tension or resistance or stress and giving it permission right now to release Letting it just sink down to the earth. And taking another cleansing breath, breathing right into those beautiful hips. Big open mouth exhale. Take an inhale, scoop the arm, or excuse me, the hands down. And then inhale, reaching the arms all the way up, palms touch. And then exhale, bringing the hands to heart once again. And gently bowing our heads. Closing our practice. Thank you so much, yogis, for practicing with me. I hope your hips feel open. I hope you feel spaciousness throughout your whole body and that you take this spaciousness into other areas of your day, of your life. Namaste. Namaste, yogis.